the relationship between spontaneity and enthalpy. These are all spontaneous reactions, so what can we conclude? We're burning some oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. The enthalpy of the reaction is very exothermic, almost 900 kilojoules per mole. This is an exothermic reaction. Now, you should think a little deeply about this because if you mix methane and oxygen, it doesn't spontaneously react. So the take-home message here is, sure, it's spontaneous, oh, except for the activation energy. What they mean is overall the free energy will be negative, but you do get have to go over the hump. So really, spontaneous may not be the best choice of a term. Uh, if we mix an acid in a base, it can make water. That's exothermic and spontaneous. We can melt some water. Well, look, it's, mo it's slightly endothermic. See the positive value there? There must be some other driving force for this reaction that makes it spontaneous. And if you already know about these sort of things, you know that it has an increase in randomness, if we will. And so uh, if you've had this stuff before, you'll understand that the entropy is increasing, and that's enough to make the free energy negative. So if you haven't had this before, you should understand that there's more to predicting a spontaneous process than just looking at the enthalpy. Ammonium nitrate can form the ammonium cation, the nitrate anion. That's positive, but hmm, it is two th one thing turning into two that are dissolved. So you might, uh, well, I'm revealing a little bit, but what's happening is these things are increasing in their randomness. That gives it a little push, if you will, and makes the overall delta G, the free energy of the reaction, negative. So spontaneous reactions don't all release heat to the surroundings, but usually they do. And temperature and entropy both can play a role, although it's not the world's most large effect. That's a little bit about uh, spontaneous processes and enthalpy.